Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, we are going to talk about five mistakes which people normally do when they are defining the tagging strategy for their enterprise. So watch this video till the end and understand about all these mistakes and please don't do that when you are defining the tagging strategy for your organization. Let's get started. All right, so the first one is mandatory tags. Many of the times people go ahead and actually specify a tagging strategy, but they do not very strictly say that what are those mandatory tags which everyone should apply. And what happens is many different business units within your organization may go ahead and say that these are the mandatory tags or these are the tags which we follow. No, there should be a set of mandatory tags which should be common and should be followed across uh, you know, across all the business units in your organization, which means doesn't matter who is creating a particular resource, those mandatory tags should be applicable. So go ahead and define the set of those mandatory tags. How many? It could be five, it could be 10, really depends on your use case, right? But the mandatory tags should be defined centrally. The next thing is case sensitivity. Why is this important? In case of AWS, the tags are case sensitive, right? So it's it's always a wise thing that you go ahead and specify your tag keys and values carefully. A very safe approach would be to actually use just the lower case characters, right? For example, if you if you decide to actually host your resources across multiple cloud providers, let's say AWS Azure and Google Cloud. And if you go ahead and look at the tagging standards or tagging restrictions, I should say, uh, which all the cloud providers actually enforce, you'll find that some of the some of these cloud providers do not support uh, uppercase characters in in their tag keys, right? For example, GCP doesn't support that. So you should try to look at the common characters or symbols which are supported across major cloud providers. So a very safe thing would be to go with um, small case characters or lower case characters and uh, maybe include hyphens in between that is supported in all the cloud providers. So for example, if you want to write cost center, you can write cost hyphen center, right? So that could be your tag key. If you want to write a project code, it could be project, everything in small, hyphen, code, C-O-D-E, code, right? So that way, you can go ahead and define your tag keys. You should consider this very carefully. Why is it important? Because if you do not define it carefully, um, people will go ahead and actually write all the different versions of the tags. So for example, you are saying cost center, but somebody will write C capital of cost and then C capital of center, right? Uh, those type of things. And then when you look at your reports in, in AWS Cost Explorer or anywhere else, you will have all those different versions available and it just basically makes your data dirty, right? So please make sure that while you are defining the tags at that time itself, you define their uh, tag keys very carefully and specify the case sensitivity there. The third thing is allowed values. What are allow allowed values? Allowed values are nothing but like, what are the allowed tag values, I should say, actually, right? So for all those mandatory tags, which you have specified, right? Let's say, cost center, project code, uh, support email, right? Something like that. So all those mandatory tags which you are specifying, you should also specify that what are the allowed values for each and every tag. Let's talk about a very common tag which people use called environment. Now, what could be the possible values for environment? You may, you may say it could be production, pre-production, you know, UAT, development. Now, if you go ahead and talk to four people, they will tell you all different values for the same thing, right? Somebody might say testing, somebody might say UAT, somebody might say something else, right? So in every organization, different terms may get used. So what you should do is 
go ahead and specify it or define it once, right? And define it once that, okay, let's say in our organization, these five or six possible values are there for the environment tag, right? And when you are specifying the values as well, define it in a case sensitive way. For example, let's say production. So you may you may decide that, you know, if I'm writing production, uh, P would be capital of production or maybe everything would be small. You can decide it. But important thing is decide it in the start and just then make sure that everybody follows that, right? That's very important. So make sure that you specify, uh, you specify all the allowed tag values and also specify them as well in a case sensitive manner. One important, one small thing which I would say here is try to avoid multi values, right? Uh, what's that? Sometimes people, people try to define some tag keys and in that they think that we will go ahead and specify uh, multiple values separated by comma and things like that. That is, that is generally not a very good practice because I mean, you can do that, but, but, but you will deal with data quality there really, right? Because when you, when you give these type of, um, a possibility to people that you can go ahead and specify multiple values, then validating those, you know, uh, validation of those values actually becomes difficult. So you can do it, but general suggestion would be try to avoid it. Try to think about all the necessary groupings which you want to do and based on that specify or create your mandatory tax and specify their possible values, right? But do not do not go ahead and define tags where one tag it can have multiple values separated by comma and things like that. That is generally not a very good idea. Now, the next important thing is, and this is this one is very important because a lot of people actually fail here. It's the dynamic set of tag values. Now, it's like this. Let's say in your organization, there is a mandatory tag called project code. Now, what are the possible values for project code? You cannot, you like, you cannot just say same like environment, like in, in, in case of environment, you can say these are the five or six possible values. Can you do the same for project code? Answer is no. Because project code is something which keeps getting generated. As business happens, it keeps getting generated and a few project codes will get closed, few new project codes will get created and things like that, right? So the what are the correct project codes? Uh, you cannot just put some rule around it. You need to have that list of the valid project code at any point of time and you need to validate against it. So this is one place where a where lot of uh, organizations fail because uh, because they are not able to establish, you know, they are not able to establish uh, this dynamic set all the time. So an easy way to do this thing is that make sure that you that you establish some sort of process with your finance team, let's say, right? In this case, we are talking about project code. So whichever team in your organization is maintaining all those project uh, lists, establish a process with them and ask them to actually generate the list of project code and put, you know, upload it in a certain location. It could be an S3 bucket, let's say, right? Just tell them that this is how, this is how we need the, we need the project code and maybe once in a week or once in a month, depending on how frequently the code changes, you can ask them to generate the list of project code and upload it to a certain S3 location. And then what you could do is, you can have, a, you know, maybe a Lambda function written, which picks up that, uh, that file from S3 bucket and uploads it into a certain parameter store probably, right? So understand that there will be two types of tags which you will, which you will create. Certain tags will have values where there are fixed values, right? Uh, a set of values, but they are fixed. For example, yes or no, or like, multiple values for environment as we discussed, right? So you will specify those values or you will say that 
people should choose only out of these but there will be things like project code cost center or something else like this right where you cannot give people a, a list right they will be specifying a number and it becomes your responsibility to actually go ahead and then validate whether that code is correct or not and how will you validate it you will validate it by creating config rules right so make sure that you go ahead and create config rules which can which can which can actually evaluate your resources for the mandatory tags and if your if the if any resource is not having all the all the mandatory tags with the correct values with the allowed values then it should actually go ahead and mark that resource as non compliant you can you can go ahead and do that easily with config rules and that's where uh you know in your config rule when you are writing your config rule using a lambda you can actually go ahead and write the logic in such a way that for certain um tags like project code or cost center etc go ahead and check the value against a set against a particular dynamo db table or against a particular parameter store you can go ahead and do that okay the last thing here is clear guidance around finding tag values now you can go ahead and you know define all the mandatory tags how it should be written what are the allowed values and everything but unless until you you write down very clearly and explain it in your organization that how should people go ahead and and figure out the tag values for their workload your tagging strategy will not work so make sure that you you write this down very clearly that what's the process for the users to go ahead and find out the find out the values for each and every tag let's say you have got some sort of application id so so you might be having um some database or some sort of catalog in your organization so you need to explain it in your tagging document or tagging strategy document that how should people go ahead and get the application id from the application catalog portal right explain it the idea is that make sure that you go through each and every mandatory tag and you explain that how should people how should people go ahead and get the right value for that particular tag right and if you specify this clearly people should be able to find the correct value and should apply the right values while creating the tags so those were the five things for you i'm not trying to tell you in this video that what are the tags which you need to create you can just go ahead and take it from the aws documentation for that matter they have written it all and then you can tweak it according to your organization requirements but the important thing is doesn't matter what tags you are specifying these five things you should take care so that your tagging strategy or your tags are really useful otherwise as time passes you know the tags will be in bad shape and whatever value you need to get out of those tags that you will never get of course in addition to the mandatory tags users can always have additional tags not a problem but the important thing which needs to be enforced is that there are certain mandatory tags and that nobody should avoid or nobody can avoid okay all right so with that we'll go ahead and wrap this one we'll meet again in the next video till then Take care bye bye